As we all know, the whole point of playing Dungeons & Dragons is to make our players uh, cry. That's, that's terrible, it's not. That's, but this is the story of how I did that. On purpose. Twice. Two times. It was my first campaign with this group, right? So the important characters for this story are Atticus Airy, our cleric, and uh, Acorn, our warforged druid. This campaign kicks off with the party crash landing a cruise liner sized airship on the deserted island. Through their adventure they discovered that not only were there dormant mind flayers on this island, the mind flayers had actually caused the party's ship to crash so they could use it to escape. The campaign culminates in a fight on top of the crashed airship called the Boundless Glory against an elder brain, the hive mind of the mind flayers, and its minion, I used a star spawn hulk. If the body allows them to escape, the Elder Brain heads back to the mainland and likely enslaves all of humanity, which is considered is considered bad. Um, if you don't play D&D and you don't know, um, enslavement of humanity by Mind Flayers is generally a raw deal. The party are fighting tooth and nail, but they're kind of getting their ass kicked. In an act of genius, truly I didn't see this coming, they throw a bit of a curveball in, and that curveball is in the shape of a fireball. They launch this fireball into the engine room, which they know is going to cause a cataclysmic explosion. Massive. And so I give them one round before the engine room and the whole ship explodes, right? So they teleport, they fly, they otherwise just leap off the ship to escape it. But then, right before initiative count zero, like a physiotherapist without a license, I put a little twist in it. Come on. I want them it big brains. It is the brains. elder brains turn. Oh god, what if it... Oh god! It doesn't do anything to you, Akon. Instead, you see the mass of flesh that is the Starspawn Hulk start to melt and change. You see large, almost bat-like, membranous wings sprout from its back oh, no. as it stalks towards the flesh encasing of where the elder brain sits. On the Starspawn Hulk's turn, initiative count three, it will fly away with the Elder Brain. What I didn't know is that Acorn had a plan, or as he called it, his Master, Master Brain, brain play. play. Only Acorn sees that the Elder Brain is pulling in its minion to fly it away. You see, earlier in the fight, he had summoned a few Vine Blights to surround the Elder Brain. So his plan was he'd use one of his last spell slots to cast plant growth, anchoring from his vine blights to make the difficult terrain created by the spell to extend just a little higher into the air. Was it completely rules as written? No. But it made enough sense and it was cool. And he knew, I knew, that without being able to use his action to dash away, he was going down with the ship. Now, you told me that one of my plant things lived. My third plant thing that I have is plant growth. That is all I have left. I'm on top of the Elder Brain. My wave of zombie plant... Your, your, your vine throat, like your, your vine blights, yeah. They are, they are, you, you told it to them to attack the Elder Brain itself. They are, they are swarming around it as the as the star spawn kind of like zeroes in and, and, and grabs it from its casing. I don't care about living. I don't care about running away because Acorn doesn't think that it wouldn't match up with what I've done throughout the entire campaign. The yes. only thing now that I'm saying is I'm going to plant growth these things that are next to me, the swarm of whatever it is, and I'm going to just... It, it's, I don't even say words when I plant growth these. The spell isn't even words. I'm just anger, pain. You, you stand and you start like your, your, the pistons in your knees fire and it's one step. And as your step lands, it kind of like reverberates out. And you can see those vine blights that you have that are swarming start to grow. They're not one creature anymore than their one latticework of vines as you sprint towards them they grow and grow uh, monstrously they start to encompass and envelop uh, the creatures around you the starspawn hulks has to rip free of them before you go crash tackling into them uh, as all the vines begin to grow around each 
entity keeping them all together, keeping them from escaping. That includes me. And at initiative count zero, the boundless glory explodes. And we'll end the session. Jesus Christ. Panda, how could you do this? Zachary. Ooh, that's cry number one. Mark it. Do we have a marker? I guess the question is, is it worth it? When you're doing these dramatic moments that, you know, in a game that's supposed to be fun for the players, they're supposed to be having a good time, is it worth it to create these really emotional moments that can, like, be a little bit heavier? I can't believe you made Lucky Cry, Zach. I can't believe it. I feel really bad about that part of it. I feel awful about that. I was like, yeah, good storytelling. And Lucky Cry, I'm like, oh, no, I feel bad now. It was, no, it was a good, it was a good storyline. Like it was it. so good. good. It, like, I, and uh, part of the reason why I'm crying is because I grew attached to the characters mm. and the story that you guys made. And I'm just like, I don't want to get over <laughs> I guess the question is, would I do it again? And the answer is absolutely every time I would do it again. Cry number two, baby. That's right. Mark it on the board. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh.